Hello beautiful people, welcome back to the channel. My name is Chu and today we're going to be going over the five things that I think every young producer should know. These are just a few things that I've come to view as very valuable during my growth as a producer. Like, of everything I've learned, these are the most important in my opinion. So let's just jump right in, shall we? Drop a like on this video if you end up learning something new or just enjoy the content. And be sure to smack that subscribe button if it's still red so I can buzz away in your pocket the next time I have some fire content for you. Oh, and download my fire new free kit 14. It's got sounds from all my placements and a lot of my viral beats. There will be a link in the description below. Okay, let's get started. Number one, posting your beats on YouTube. Posting beats on YouTube literally changed my life. Like, I'm not even gonna lie to you, homie. YouTube has been good to you, boy. So I might be a little biased with this one, but just hear me out because there's a lot of benefit to this. YouTube is the biggest video sharing platform by far in the world. TikTok, get the fuck out of here, you second-rate application, almost shutting down and shit. Boy, YouTube would never. Anyways, on top of that, YouTube also just recently crossed the threshold for 2 billion monthly users, and they are owned, backed, and powered by the most powerful search engine in the world, Google. I say all this to say that there has never been a better time to start posting beats to YouTube. It truly does blow my mind a bit that more producers don't take advantage of this tool, to be honest. With millions of search queries happening every single moment on the platform, there's ample opportunity to need to curate an audience and build your brand. Further, many, many, many of the most poppin' producers today all got their start on good old YouTube. And guys like Cody and Cash Money AP still post beats on YouTube even though they're like fucking platinum or something. And honestly, I can hear you now. But you, no shit it's a good idea to post beats on YouTube, but how do I actually take advantage of the platform? And you know what? That's a really good question because you don't wanna just show up and start chucking content into the algorithm. That is definitely a formula for failure. This isn't a video about YouTube marketing, so I won't go in depth about how to make the most out of it. But I do actually have an awesome tool for producers who want to learn how to use YouTube to build their brand and sell beats. You see, a while ago I was doing this thing where I would review producers YouTube channels for free and after doing damn near 2000 of them, I stopped. I have since gone back over a bunch of them and selected the best ones to compile into a library for other producers to study, for free of course. These channel audits are full of informational gems directly from me about the right thing to do with your YouTube channel so you can make the most of it as a producer. I highly recommend checking it out, especially if you haven't started a channel yet. It will give you such a good starting ground to make sure the algorithm can't bury your wonderful content. If you're interested in the channel audit library, you'll be able to find a link to it in the description below. For reference, I've been using these very tips that I teach in the library to build my second channel, which I started just before New Year's this year. And we are already almost at 1500 subscribers, and I sell a beat license or two from this channel every day. Tip number one, post your beats to YouTube and do it often. Tip number two, basic chord structure. A lot of my friends who aren't producers always say something like this. Oh, Chew, I wanna start making beats, but I just don't have time to learn music and music theory. And honestly, this always sounds so dumb to me because for one, if you actually wanted to do something, you would just do it. You wouldn't bellyache about the work. Further, once you started, you would realize that music theory is absolutely not a necessity for being a good producer. Case in point, I still don't know that much theory, but I do have some placements and I've made a decent amount of cash from music. Not bragging, just saying. Still, that all being said, I do think it is important to understand a couple of basic musical concepts because this will greatly improve your ability to navigate production-wise. One of these basic musical concepts is simple chord structure. And I'm not talking about anything crazy here, I'm just talking about the basic triad chords. And if you don't know, a triad is just a chord made of only three notes. I think it is very important for every producer to know how to make a minor and a major chord. This knowledge will make you more musically functional and will make you more confident as a producer as a result. If you want to make a minor chord, my favorite, all you have to do is place one note, it can be anywhere, and then this will be the first note of your chord the root note. Then move up two notes or spaces and play the third note. This will be the second note of your chord. Then from the second note, move up three more spaces and then place your last note on the fourth space. And there, you have a perfectly pristine minor chord. I guess I'm like half demon or something because I don't really fuck with major chords. They just sound too happy for me, bro. But if you're into that soft baby bun bullshit, here's how you can do it. Just take the minor chord structure and then move the middle note up one space. And boom, there you have it. Now, you might be thinking that this isn't particularly useful on its own, but these two specific chord structures are actually the basis of basically all music. They are actually so powerful that you can make beats just using one major or one minor chord. Here, I'll even show you real quick.
boom, whole beat done. Only one minor chord. Crazy. There's so much more learning you can do with these chords that will take this knowledge to the next level, but you really have to get this first part down. Once you do, the rest of it becomes relatively easy. If you want to learn more about melody making and how you can apply basic music theory to that concept, I have a really good tutorial which you can check out here. Tip number two, learn basic chord structure. Number three, protect your ears. This is one that a lot of older producers <laughs> probably wish they heard earlier. There are actually a lot of down the line long-term consequences that come with repeatedly hammering your ears with loud, powerful sound waves. You have to understand that a producer's ears are going to be under an extreme amount of stress. For one, you will be listening to more music than the average person, mostly because you appreciate it more, but also because you're studying it. And if you're anything like me, you like to bang that shit on pretty high volume. Volumes. When you listen in headphones all the time, you trap the noise in your ears, which increases the strain you put on them. And when you listen on studio monitors or loudspeakers, you channel very loud sound waves directly at your ears, which is possibly more damaging than just the headphones. Besides listening to other people's music, we also make our own, again, probably at very high volumes. If you want a good way to fend off long-term ear damage and trauma, try turning down the volume on your speakers, studio monitors, and headphones. This will protect your ears, but it will also improve your mixing ability a bit. Everything sounds good when it's loud. Try listening to and tweaking your beats at moderate or low volumes. Trust me, <laughs> your mixes will be grateful. Tip number three, protect your ears. They are your biggest asset as a producer. Duh. Tip number four, save money. I know in this day and age of competition, comparison, and social media distortion, it can be very tempting to spend money on things in order to keep up with the Joneses. Spending money as fast as it comes seems to be a trait of modern day life, especially in the Western world. But something to understand is that your money is power and how you treat your money, AKA your power, is a very determining factor of your character. If you spend money just to look cool, this indicates that you have a very weak character. And I don't mean to point fingers, I mean, this is coming from the guy who literally drives a Mercedes Benz. But I think what I mean to say is that money is important. It's not everything, <laughs> but it's important. And anytime you get it, you should think very critically about what you're gonna do with it and why. I have always had a bad habit of spending money even before I have it. My parents were never the type to indulge my desires, so when I started making money off of music, all I wanted to do was eat and eat and eat. And that manifested itself in a very bad spending habit. I was very interested in treating myself and then one day my accountant sat me down and was like look kid you are spending way too fast I get it but at this rate you aren't gonna have anything to show for it you need to start saving and you need to start saving now this was like super humbling because this is coming from a guy who knows how much I make I, I make more than him and he is still telling me that I'm out of control with my money that was eye-opening since then I've made it a point to save money no matter what I save about a thousand dollars a week and I try to leave no more than 30 to 50 dollars in my checking account at one time <laughs> because I know myself I have been doing this for a while and something amazing happened as a result. I have somehow become more responsible overall. It's like once I started to discipline myself with money, I started to discipline myself in other areas of life as well. I'm sure a few of you follow me on Instagram and know all about my no folding journey and how I work out every day. I've been able to gain 20 pounds of muscle in just six months. Since I developed this new savings habit, I've also begun to meditate every day. I quit video games and replaced it with reading instead. And I now keep TV watching to a minimum, though I must admit that Castlevania has had me on a bit of a binge lately. <laughs> but you cannot enact my plan because you don't have the skills or the wit. <laughs> you sound like a cow farting. Do you want your precious Dracula back or not? Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> now, you don't have to start saving a thousand dollars a week. I'm not saying that. As a rule of thumb, you wanna be able to save at least 5% of your monthly income. This is important for several reasons that I can't really explain right now, but this habit will prepare you for the unexpected by having money stashed away. This will also be very good for any opportunities that come up that may require you to pay for them. It's the worst thing in the world to miss out on a really good opportunity because you didn't have enough money to fund yourself. This habit will greatly build your character and will instill a powerful discipline in you, which will serve you for the rest of your life. Tip number four, save money. Tip number five, don't overthink shit. Now, I mean, this one is like a big time duh, right? I mean, every producer says this. Like for Christ's sake, there's even a producer who's got it as his entire brand, 
my G. It's a no-brainer that you shouldn't overthink things in life generally, but especially as a producer. But I feel like a lot of people don't really get into why it's important not to overthink, and as a result, a lot of young producers overlook this tip entirely. Overthinking takes a lot of the emotion out of your work. When you start to stress about the right chord voicing or proper parallel compression or whatever the fuck else, it takes something away from your creativity. Music production is emotionally driven through and through. Which is why I stated earlier that you don't really need theory because you don't. Our jobs are to make things that sound good. Only other producers care about your technicals. And to be real with you, it's because most of them are a bunch of fucking trolls. Stop caring what other people think. Stop caring about upholding the standards of the producer community. Do whatever the fuck you want to do as long as it sounds good. Forgetting to EQ those last few frequencies is not the worst thing you can do as a producer. In my opinion, the worst thing you can do as a producer is make something that is technically sound, but that sounds like complete ass to the listener. That that is just a true tragedy. Buy templates, use loops, collab with people, finish and export your projects. Let people hear your music, get feedback, and then refine the process rinse and repeat. But if you get hung up on every little part of the process, you are never going to make any progress. Then you'll just be that one producer who has all the technicals down, but that can't make a vibey beat to save their lives. And that is not the move, brother. Tip number five, don't overthink shit. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a bit different than what I normally do on this channel, but it is what you guys voted for. And besides, I really do think that this information will be really helpful to a lot of young producers, especially the ones in my audience, because I've had a lot of time to talk with y'all. <laughs> We're really similar. Let me know if you have any questions about anything. I really did breeze through these, so if there's something that you didn't understand, feel free to drop a question or two in the comment section below. I'll hit you with a response if it's something that I think I can help you out with. If you guys like these types of videos, definitely let me know. I would love to make a few more of these. Thank you so much much for coming by to watch this video. I appreciate you more than you could ever understand. Please drop a like if you learned something new or just enjoyed the content and be sure to smack that subscribe button if it's still red. I'll be replying to comments for the whole next hour so blow me up. Have an awesome day. I love you and I'll see you soon. Peace.